those message asking whether or not people are going to play out today. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of counterproductive yeah. because if you're going to complain about the second guess, you're going to complain about the question. Right. Right. Sorry. Uh, guys. Okay, that's. I'm going to get started talking about advanced technology for web design. This is my first time using the remote. So I'm Bryce, I live down the street, and I've been accused of being a back end developer, not so much front end. <laughs> uh, this is some JavaScript I wrote. Uh, it's full of SQL, which was the, this is client side JavaScript, and it's my first uh, SQL error in JavaScript. So, since I'm a back end developer, this presentation, there's going to be a lot of terminal stuff. If you don't know, it's uh, applications utilities terminal.app. On Mac and in Windows, it's like start accessory system tools command line or uh, Windows R and that's CMD, like everybody else uses. Uh, because this might be a problem for somebody, uh, web designers, you know, you'll you'll be better, you'll get better rates if you just don't refuse to use a terminal because it's not pretty, like TextMate or Dreamweaver or Coda. So, uh, last thing I'm going to talk about dealing with the terminal, deal with it. <laughs> so there's three main languages on the web. HTML, which is used to define the page, draw out the content. CSS, which is used to control how the content is displayed. JavaScript, which lets you sort of animate the content. Now, when I say animate, I don't mean like strictly, you know, move left, move right. But more make the content live. You know, talk back to the server if you want. Do stuff like that. And on top of those, there's a few other tools that you can use. There's Compass, which is sort of the meta framework for CSS. I'll talk more about that later. Rate, which is a build tool used that can be used to make web pages, along with other things. And Charleston, which is a framework for building a static site. More on these three later. So the topics I'm going to talk about are panel, SAS, Compass, CopyScript. Rake and Charleston. So first things, most of these tools are built on HTML, which HAML is a HTML abstraction markup language. What that means is that this HTML, which has a div, more divs, some inputs, some uh, spans, and text area, you can express it either as this much HTML with all the closing tags and slashes and stuff, or as this HAML. So I'm going to split this panel up into its independent parts. There's the class name, the dot class name syntax, just like in the CSS file sheet. There's also an implicit div if you don't say what tag it is. You can put a tag name with a percent sign and a CSS ID with a pound sign, just like the CSS language. And right here we have the tag name, which is a span. It's a button class. It's ID is save button that contains the text to save. Now putting it on the same line isn't necessary. You can also put it on the next line to get a lot of it. So this is a fully formed camera document. It uses the HTML5 document type, which is the chick 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 line at the top. Uh, it has a head, it has a title, it has a body, an H1, a content div, a paragraph. And then down here, I'm calling it the markdown. Because Hamel's not great for pros, it's hard to put links in the middle of your text. So it's kind of a cheat to use Markdown, but it feels a lot nicer for writing. And this is the HTML generates. So how do you install Hamel? Go ahead. It's it's easier to stay compliant because a lot of the stuff like you can't. There's literally no way to express nesting tags the wrong way. And I guess the, the tag nesting rule, so you can still put a uh, you know a paragraph inside a paragraph inside a you know, image tag if you want to. But I think I actually think it'll freak out if you do the image tag wrong. It, it doesn't force those properties on. Which one? It, it doesn't force that. Yeah, you can set it. So on the Mac, you do gem install handle because Mac is a Ruby gem install. On Windows, you visit rubyinstaller.org, install 
in there that handline jumps all down. So the workflow for handle, just handle in isolation, is to write the handle file, use the handle tool on the handle file, and join the HTML file. This is how you run it. You give it the input file and send the output to the output file. Once you've done that, you can just open the file in the web browser and there it is. Any more handle questions?
there's quite a few different build services. There's textile yeah. as well. There's, there's textile, there's some sort of, there's null filters like for JavaScript, because mm -hmm. JavaScript doesn't fit in the handle syntax at all. And you just call the JavaScript filter and it surrounds it with script tags and tells your text editor to treat that block differently. So next up is Hamel's basically next door neighbor called SAS. So this is a sample of some CSS. I'm styling the header, I'm setting the height on the header, setting the height for a div inside the header, setting the height and width for a logo, it's a logo div inside the header div. And on the links in the logo, I'm setting their width and height individually. Now what if we want to change the height of the header? There's 89px in four different places there. And if we had some divs that were only half the height of the header, we'd also have to do some math and change that out too. With SAS, what we can do is pull those out into separate variables. And then it's just like Handle, instead of doing the nesting with lots of open and closed brackets and having to manually turn, you know, a logo inside a header and having the right header all those different times, you can do it with indents here. So this SAS document does produce this CSS document. So I'm going to break this down to you again. So you have variable assignments. Whenever you do a uh, CSS descriptor and then properties, just indent the properties and it will automatically surround with braces. And then you reference the variables. You can also do math with them. So for colors, you can say make this 20% brighter or divide this in half, that sort of thing. And then since this div is indented farther than the dot header, it says, well, I'm going to compile this to dot header div. You see anything <clears throat> interesting other than like a gradient with uh, math on a color? I think you should be able to. Right, that's kind of where I'm at. I haven't seen anyone doing anything interesting with it yet, other than uh, a gradient, right? Like 10% yeah. colder, you step down or something. Yeah, uh, remind me after the presentation, I'll give it a shot. Okay. So the installation, it's actually part of Camel right now. It's going to change to the next version to be its own separate gen. But for now, on Mac, Gem install handle, and on Windows, you have Ruby installer, and Gem install handle. And the workflow, we'll go ahead. Isn't there um, like an inheritance in, in SAS where you had that you were repeating that header through multiple child levels in your file? Um, I remember someone did a SAS presentation a few months ago. I remember there being like a, inherit all the properties from this and then these are my overrides. I think there is a tool to do that in SAS. I've never used it, so this yeah, is SAS has mix ins. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the other thing. I go into mix ins more on okay. this. Mix ins on the most yeah. awesomest thing in the world. <laughs> wow. Wow. Are we talking about that now? <laughs> <laughs> Stretch the rest of the presentation. So invoking SAS is just like handle. Go ahead. No, no, sure. Oh. So you invoke it with the input file, send it to the output file, and then we talk about colors.